good morning, Edgewood Church. We just want to let you know how much we miss you, how much we love you. And I just want to remind you this morning that Jesus is no longer on the cross. Amen. He's on the throne. So worship with us this morning. church family. God bless you and thank you for tuning in. And I hope you receive a blessing from, uh, from watching and worshiping with us and, uh, and do that. Give your best. Tune in and uh, tune yourself into the Word of God and tune yourself into worship also. I believe we're on the, uh, uh, the downhill side of this thing. I hope we are and I pray we are, but I believe with all my heart we are. And I am, I'm looking forward to, and I know you are too, to getting back together in the house of God and being together as a church family. And that's what we are. We're a church family. So I want to encourage you. Check on your church family. Make some phone calls. Write some letters. Shoot a text. But check on your, your Sunday school class and check on the folks that sit around you and check on your, your, your family of faith. Would you do that? Just check on them and make sure that they're okay. And as far as I know, everybody's doing okay as far as the COVID-19 virus. We're doing fine. There are prayer requests. People in the hospital are praying for them and checking on them. But God bless you for tuning in. Let me have a word of prayer. And then you worship the Lord and you sing and give them your best. And then I'm looking forward to preaching the precious word of God to you. Pray with me. Father, thank you for uh, today. We give you all the praise and glory. I thank you for the praise team and the band and uh, those in production, Lord. We just want to give you our best because you gave us your best. You sacrificed for us, Jesus. And I thank you for the privilege 
to serve you. And I pray your Holy Spirit would just rest upon us. Father, as we sing to your glory and praise, I pray that your Holy Spirit would rest upon us. But I also pray that your Spirit would um, just go into the homes that are, that are watching. I pray that, that your Holy Spirit, that he would do a work in our heart and life and in a work of encouragement to some and a work, of, a work of hope to others or blessing or even salvation or sanctification or a calling or a surrender, whatever you decide to do, Lord Jesus, we pray that you do it. We open up our hearts to you. We'll be obedient. We'll follow. We pray your precious will would be done. Thank you for the Lord's day. Help us like the Apostle John where he said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I just pray every one of us would be in the Spirit. I pray every day. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for our time together. In your precious name, amen. Well, amen, church. Well, things may change, methods may change, but I can tell you one thing that will never change. <clears throat> And that's the goodness of God. Sing with us. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me in all my days. I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God
been so good to so many of us. You know, I think now in the book of Isaiah, chapter number six, Isaiah has an encounter with the Lord. And so many times I found myself spiritually in what I feel is the position that Isaiah was in, where he's, he's looking at the Lord and he feels so unworthy to even be in his presence. And I think about what our pastor said last week about how he doesn't always call the qualified. But because he is God, he can qualify the call. And I believe the question that Isaiah was asked is the same question that God is, is asking us every day. Who, who will go and who can I send? And I hope that every morning you make the decision to answer the Lord and say, Here I am, Lord. Send me. Church, let's sing with the angels. You 
Father God, we come into your house this morning, Father. Lord, forgive us if our worship has ever come about the song or if it's ever become about the music, God. Lord, forgive us if it's ever become, God, about our talent that you've blessed us with, Father. Mm. God, I heard one time that talent without the Spirit is just a concert. God, I pray that the worship done in this church and across any other church, Father, it would never be about the concert. God, that it would be about a one-on-one -on -one connection with your Spirit, Father. That we may be corporate in worship. God, we can just be you and us, Father, you and me. Lord, forgive us if we've made worship something it isn't. God, this morning we give back to you, Father. We want to exalt you with praise. Tell you how much we love you, God. Not just because of what you can do for us, Father, but what you've already done. God, I thank you so much for this church. I thank you for this pastor. God, I thank you so much for our pastor. God, that loves us. God, like your word tells us to. And God, I pray this morning, God, as he shares the word that you've put on his heart, Father, that he would preach without apology, God, with your power and anointing, Father, flowing all over him and through him, Father. Help us to receive what it is that you have for us this morning, God, is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, amen. Thank you to the praise team. Uh, for leading us in worship and thank you for Brandon for that good prayer and sweet prayer uh, for me thank you so very much I do want to wish Mr. Charlie Kirkland today is your birthday and uh, we wish you a happy birthday just hope you have a great day in the Lord we love you so much uh, I've been wanting to say something for a, a, a few weeks now and uh, I, I really should have already said it but I want to say a special thank you to all the uh, health care workers uh, really everywhere, but especially those that are at Edgewood Church. And uh, you're on the front lines, and uh, you're out there with it, and uh, you're doing a great job. And I, I really, if, uh, if, you were here, if, the, if you were here today, and I were to say thank you to the health care workers, I believe that this church would give you a standing ovation for the work you do. And I know you do it for a vocation, some of you, it's, it's a job. But listen, some of you, it's a calling and you love it and you do it and you do it unto the Lord and you do it for people and uh, and you do a great job so thank you for being on the front lines and thank you for uh, for doing all that you do with uh, the COVID-19 storm that's out there you're out there and you're diligent and you're faithful thank you so very much uh, let me say this also we'll probably be wearing masks for a while when you go places and, and things like that and being careful uh, Pam Collins if you're an Alabama fan she has made some Alabama face masks and she'll sell those five dollars a piece if you want them and you can call the office and we'll hook you up there and uh, and I don't know about Auburn face mask maybe we can get you some somewhere along the line but Pam's made some Alabama face masks let me say this as far as the tithe and offering uh, goes it belongs to the Lord whether we're uh, meeting together in church or whether we're at home the tithe always belongs to the Lord matter of fact in Malachi it's a principle with a promise the principle is if we tithe he'll oh, the promise is now he'll open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that we can't contain that's a godly principle and listen God doesn't open windows or do windows for less than 10 percent and so um, you, you, you wherever we are in life is stewardship every area of life our talents our tithe our, uh, the treasures we have the time that we have it's all God so you practice good stewardship let me, matter of fact, let me say this um, the past few weeks 1100 churches were surveyed about the, uh, the state of the plate is what it is the state of the plate and 1100 churches were surveyed and 65 percent of churches giving was down 65 percent was down not able to meet their budget 27 percent was the same it was close enough to be the same church was able to meet their budget eight percent of churches during this time giving went up because of the faithfulness of the people can I tell you 
Edgewood Church is in the 8% of the giving. We've been up, I don't know what the final tally be, Susan. Yeah, thank the Lord. It's really, praise the Lord. It's, it's been amazing. And people come by, almost every day people come by the church and, and give their tithes and offerings. They, 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 they do it um, online. They send it in the mail. So it's been very, very healthy. I don't know what the final toll is. The steward committee will take care of all that. But I know this. It, it's, it's, and we, we had a large gift given. We had a large gift given by a church member, and God bless them for it. But even if that hadn't happened, we'd have still been up in giving. So I thank you for that, and I pray that you continue to practice good stewardship. It's part of life, whether we're here or there. I've talked enough. Uh, Tammy's going to bless us with a song, and then I'll preach the Word of God to you. Thank you. His heart was broken, mine was mended. He became sin, now I am clean. The cross he carried bore my burden. The nails that held him set me free. His life for mine, His life for mine, how could it ever be that He would die, God's Son would die, to save brought me healing. He spilled his blood to fill my soul. His crown of thorns, it made me royalty. His sorrow
Thank the Lord. And he did. He gave his life for mine, for God so loved the world that he gave. He's a giver, and uh, he's a wonderful Savior, and uh, I'm looking forward to preaching the word to you uh, right now. So God bless you. It's, this is a t- great type of message. I'm going to share with you in a few minutes to take notes. So if you're at home, get a uh, pen, uh, pencil, uh, paper, uh, the Bible, and follow along, and let's just get into the Word of God. Now, so we're, um, we're keeping up, though, with, with the guidelines and um, the state of Alabama, the recommendations, and uh, we'll get back together as soon as possible, and it is going to be a grand and glorious Sunday when we can do that. But we want it to be safe. We want it to be good for everybody just to come in and rejoice in the Lord. And we're just looking forward to it. And it's going to happen. Um, Looking forward to Acts chapter 20. Looking forward to sharing God's Word. I'm going to make something that is um, uh, difficult. I'm going to make it simple. And matter of fact, I may be simplifying it too much. Uh, Hopefully that's what communicate good communicators do. They take something difficult and make it uh, understandable. But I want to talk to you about um, how to leave a legacy. How to leave, you're going to leave a legacy, good or bad. And um, whatever age you are, whatever age you are, you say, well, this is for the older folks. No, no. This is for everybody. And you need to be thinking now about the legacy that you're going to be, uh, be leaving. An inheritance that you leave is the finances, the resources, the possessions that you leave. That's your inheritance. The legacy that you leave behind, that's the spirituality. That's the morality. That's the values that you leave to your family and others that know you. So we want to leave a biblical and a godly legacy behind. And again, no matter what age you are, You need to think about it, prepare for it, and do, of course, what God's Word tells you to do. In Acts chapter 20, uh, of course, uh, the book of Acts and the book of Luke was, as a matter of fact, the book of Acts is a narrative. It's a continuation from the book of Luke. Luke, the physician, Luke, the historian, wrote um, the book of Acts to give us a narrative of the, um, the birth of the church. And, uh, and how it grew and how it reached out to all the world and how it spread the gospel into, into all the world. So how to leave a legacy. Uh, Acts chapter 20, those in here, if you want to stand with me and stretch, you can. And uh, those just watching, you, whatever you're comfortable doing. But Acts chapter 20, you need to uh, follow along on your iPhone and your iPad or your computer or the precious word of God. Acts chapter 20, I'll start at verse 16, follow along. <clears throat> For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus because he would not spend the time in Asia, for he hasted, if it were possible for him, to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. And from Miletus, he sent to Ephesus. When he got to Miletus, he sent to Ephesus, and he called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said to them, You know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many, many tears, or with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to to house. Verse 21, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, that's the Gentiles, he didn't play favorites, repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I go bound in spirit into Jerusalem. He's telling the elders at the church of Ephesus here, he's met them, I'm going bound in the spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me, save that the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me. It doesn't bother me. It won't stop me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, that the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that ye all 
among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. I've coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. I've showed you all things, how that it's so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it's more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. And they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him sorrowing most of all for the words which he spake that they should see his face no more in verse 25 that's what he said he told the oh, this will be the last time you see me and they accompanied him unto the ship can you imagine such a thing pray with me father thank you for the precious word of god we're going to learn it lord we're going to let it go deep into our heart and life we're going to let it transform us and wash us with the cleansing of the water by the precious word thank you for this service in jesus name amen Amen. You may be seated. How to leave a legacy. How to leave that legacy. How to, how to leave things behind that you want to be left behind that make a difference. I want my life to count. I hope you're there in life and, and uh, I, I, I don't know what you're going through, where you're at in life, but I hope you want your life to count. I learned a long time ago in ministry this life will soon be passed and only what's done for Christ will last. We just, listen, every Christian worth their salt ought to want to make their life count for the kingdom of God and do something of worth and value for Jesus Christ I love what that great missionary to Africa said that uh, David Livingston he said I love life and I'll go anywhere as long as it's forward so this morning let's look at the life of the Apostle Paul he took three missionary trips Really four if you count this final trip and to, and, and to go to, to Jerusalem and imprisoned. Um, so he, he wrote half of the New Testament. Great man of God. It's towards the end of his life. He's meeting with the Ephesian elders and he's reflective. He says he's looking back at his, his three years, he tells. He's, matter of fact, he spent three years at Ephesus. That's longer than any other time the apostle spent in the, at any other church. So he's reflecting. He's looking back. Somebody said that you live life looking forward, but you learn about life by looking backward. And you learn about, what should I have done differently? What should I have done more? What could I have done better? How could I have made my life count? And how could I have blessed others? You, you learn looking back and, and asking those questions. And it would be terrible to get to the end of your life and have major regrets don't do it I know people listen I know people that God had called into ministry and maybe they started well but they went another direction in life and I think one day that they didn't do God's will missionaries Christian teachers people serving in the church and I think I don't want them to get to the end of their life and I pray they don't and they, they and they have regrets and I certainly don't want them standing before the Lord and not being prepared and not doing the precious will of God. I said two weeks ago at the close of the service, I don't know if you caught it, I don't know if anybody caught it at all, but I said if Edgewood Church, when we get back, if we don't do something for the glory of God, it'll be our fault 
not God's. Because God has blessed us with wonderful, faithful, talented, gifted people here that love Jesus and love one another, and we ought to do something of eternal significance for God's glory. And what we do here, what you do here, and I do here, and the church does here, it reflects the Lord, and it's, it's an echo in eternity in what we do now and what we do here. Billy Graham even asked towards the end of his life, he asked someone, he said, did my life make a difference? That's Billy Graham. And if Billy Graham asked that question, you and I ought to be asking the question too. Is my life making a difference? What type of legacy am I leaving to others? The most important thing you and I can do when we're gone, listen, you can't put it in a will, is to leave faith as a legacy. Someone said, our fingerprints never fade from the lives that we have touched. Three things. I'm oversimplifying, but it'd be easy to remember and easy to practice this way. How to leave a legacy. And, and again, uh, number, n- number one, number one, it's, it's spiritual. It's not the material. It's the spiritual inheritance is material. Number one, I would say this, serve God's people. Serve God's people. There have been people at Edgewood Church. When I was a young minister, came here at 23 year old, there were some saints of God. All they knew was God, serving the Lord. And they left that fingerprint upon my life, upon their family's life, and upon the life of this church by their faith and their service. So I would simply say, you want to leave a legacy? You want to leave something for others to remember you by? Rather than the preacher just getting at your funeral and trying to find things to say, then serve God's people. Look what, look what Paul says in chapter 20, verse, verse, seven, verse 17. He says, and from Miletus, the God's word said, he sent to Ephesus and he called the elders of the church. He called the elders. He's on his way to Jerusalem. He stops at Miletus to see the elders whom he loved for the last time. And, and the scene, if you were to get, especially if you were to get an easy reading translation, the scene's a tearjerker. It just grabs you how he says, I've, I've shared everything I knew with you and, I, and I've loved you and I, and I worked with you. And, and, he, and he, he says, it's the last time I'm going to see you. And, and they're crying and, and, and I'm sure he is. But Paul is with people he loved. And, and I'll be honest, as I read this passage, it reminded me, and I know I'm a little mellow at times, but it reminded me of one day when I preached my last message here. This is the type of passage that a preacher would preach when he has his last message in his church, in a church. It's weepy. It's, um, it's, it, 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 it's, it's sappy. Maybe it's, it's, uh, it's teary. Uh, it's, it's sad. Matter of fact, I thought about that day, uh, and I've thought about it many times, and it's years and years and years and years away. But I won't be able to preach that day. I'll just cry and pray with you on that, my last Sunday. We'll just say a lot of prayers, and I'll do a lot of weeping. Matter of fact, you'll be able to tell, I thought you'll be able to tell when I'm getting close to saying goodbye, and it's a long way away. Because for Sundays, when I know it's, I'm going to be crying behind the pulpit, knowing that it's coming. You'll, you'll say, he's getting ready because he's crying because this is what's happening here Paul's crying with his people and the people are crying with him because it's the last time that he'll be with them okay matter of fact if uh, unless the rapture takes place this will be what we see now if the rapture takes place we need somebody to that's left behind to stay around and feed feed my cat for me would you do that I won't mention any names but we'll need somebody to stick around I'm kidding we need you to go to heaven verse 18 Chapter 20, verse 18, Paul says, And when they were come to him, he said unto them, they, they, He said to them, You know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons. Paul simply says to these Ephesian elders, He says, he says You know how I lived when I was with you. He said, You know my life. 
verse 19. I was serving the Lord with all humility of mind. He said, you know, I served him with humility and, and with many tears and, and temptations which befell me of the lying in wait of the Jews. He just summarizes his life. He summarizes his ministry in verse 19. He said, I served the Lord with great humility. I served the Lord with tears. And, and even the, the, the Jews, some of them were lying in wait, trying to trap me or, or, or trick me or get me to, to fail. You see, how do you leave a legacy? How do you make a difference in people's lives? You do it by serving them humbly. You leave a legacy, you make a difference in people's lives by serving humbly and consistently through the years. I say it so many times, anybody can be a shooting star. You can do it for a week, a month, a few months, and look fine, but do it for years. Serve Jesus Christ all your life. We have saints in here that have served in 50, 60 years, still going strong. It always gets me when somebody says, when somebody says this about, they said, they said, well, we need some, we need some people in the children's ministry. We need some people to work in this area. They say, well, I've served my time. I hear that. And I said, they're, they're treating it like it was a prison sentence. I served my time. It's, it's, it's responsibility, I know. But listen, Paul said I served him with tears. I served him with, with humility. We need to serve the Lord consistently. One of the best compliments you'll ever receive is if somebody were to say you were consistent. Now think about it. Now think about that. If somebody would say, Pastor, I'd like to, um, I'd like to talk to you a, 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 a few minutes. And say, sure, sure. Matter of fact, matter of fact, and Meyer knows this true. Sometimes we'll wake up in the morning and I'll go over and tap her and say, babe, 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 you know it's true, it's admire. Let's talk about me for a few minutes. And I'm joking, of course, I'm joking again. She'll, it will just, matter of fact, when it comes, to, it, it, we both laugh. We, we both laugh. If you were to say, Pastor, I want to talk about you for a few minutes. You were to come into my office. You come into my office and, and say, Brother Bill, could we, could we meet for a few minutes? I just want to talk about you. I say, Sure. I, Sure, we got time. Sure, sit down. I, I said, listen, I got the next four hours you can talk about me. And, he was, and they were to start talking, and they said, Pastor, I just, I just appreciate you. I just love you. And I said, well, what is it you appreciate about me? What, what is it you love about me? And they say, well, I, Pastor, you're just so, um, you're so, you're just, Pastor, you're just so, um, you're so consistent. Excuse me? Consistent? That's, that's what I am? I was hoping you'd say you're so charismatic or you're so confident or you're so charming or you're so cheerful or you're so... But, but, but consistent? That's a dull word. I was thinking about something up here. You say, Pastor... You're, you've been here 30-something years. You're so consistent. It's a dull word. But let me tell you something. In the kingdom of God, it's a beautiful word. When people, if I could say you were consistent in the nursery, God bless you for it. If I would say you're consistent with children in the working, I would say God bless you for being consistent. We need some consistent Christians. If I say, God bless you, you are so consistent with teens. You're so consistent with young adults. Is that when the newness wears off, you're so consistent in the adult ministry, in the senior adult ministry. You're so consistent behind the scenes. Or you're so consistent in the worship team. You're so consistent in your tithing. And you're so consistent in your witnessing. And you're so consistent in your Bible reading. And you're so consistent in your prayers. What a beautiful thing to say about someone. That's the way Paul was with his people. He was consistent. And it's a beautiful thing when somebody looks at somebody else and said, you live a consistent life. Paul served. You want to make a difference in somebody's life? Serve consistently. Jesus said in Mark chapter 10, verse 45, For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. And I want to tell you something. You're like Jesus when you're serving in humility and consistently. Leave a legacy. 
serve God's people. Somebody said there's two great days in your life, the day that you were born and the day that you realize why you were born. I don't think that's super biblical that way. I think the day that you were born, the day you were born again, and the day you realize you're, why you were born again. Maybe more like that, but when you learn your why, why am I here? What does God want me to do? What can I be passionate about the rest of my life and give my best to it? I bring in new members, and it's been a while since we brought in new members since we're not meeting. What if we quit calling them members? What if we started calling them servers? We're going to bring in two new servers this morning, and I would introduce their names to come into the church. And we say, we, instead of saying members, say, they're going to be servers in this church. If we would get it in our mind like that, we're servers. One more thing. You can always tell the difference in a cult and Christianity. In a cult, the leaders are served. In Christianity, the leaders serve. Write it down, take it to the bank. That's the way this works. One more thing. I know I said one more thing, but let me have you one more thing. People say, well, I've done it all right. I've served my time. No, 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 no. Serving Jesus is a privilege, and we serve the Lord. It's a privilege to do that. So I would say, if you want to leave a legacy, serve. Serve God's people. Do it consistently. Do it humbly. You'll make a difference in, in people's lives. You ought to wake up every day saying, I'm going to come in contact with this person. How can I serve them? Number two, you want to leave a legacy? I would say this to you. Speak God's truth. Speak God's truth. Look at verse 20 of, of chapter 20. Paul says to those Ephesian elders, how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you. I kept back nothing. But I showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. Paul said, I didn't hesitate to preach anything that would be helpful to you. I did it publicly. I did it privately. I spoke to you whether I was... And listen, Paul shared God's word whether he was in the palace or he was in the prison whether he was in a church house or somebody else's house, whether it was with a group of people or an individual. He, he spoke God's word. And I want to say, wherever you are, you want to leave a legacy? Speak the word of God. Learn it. Memorize it. Quote it. Share it. Speak it. Look what happened in verse, in verse 21, he says. Testifying. He's testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. Gentiles, he's, he's saying it doesn't matter who it was. I didn't play favorites. I didn't play favorites. He testified both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. Look, repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. No matter who it was. You know what he preached? Repentance. You know there are preachers in America today. There are TV preachers that never use that word Repentance. And that is a cry in shame because a person cannot be saved without repenting of their sins. They'll use the word like believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's true, believe. But listen, the devils believe and they tremble. There's got to be repentance. I'm sorry for my sin. I repent. I'm going one way, but I'm, now I'm going to be going the other way. We repent of our sins. Matter of fact, in verse 27, he says, Paul says to him, I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. And that's the way I want to be. I want to preach the whole word of God, not just parts of it, not just feel-good sermons. I've said, there's a, somebody preach the secrets to success. Well, it's not a secret, number one, if you preach it. But I want to be able to go deeper at times and say you've got to repent of your sins, and this is what the word of God says, all of it. And I preach, listen, surrender to this will, to the will of God, surrender to the word of God, and surrender to the ways of God. If the Bible says it, I will say it. If the Bible says it, I will say it, and I'll stand upon it, and this is where I will live, and this is what I will say. I've preached before, and this is true. I've preached before, and I've opened the word, and I've read it, and I started preaching, and there were visitors that got up and left when I was preaching. And I, know, and I know as soon as I said something, they got up and left. 
I know there are people that when I said something and, and, and they didn't like it, they just stared me down. And I'm preaching. There have been others that when I don't like when they don't like something that I'm preaching and the word of the word, they'll just sort of tur- tur- they'll turn me off. They'll just start reading something else or doing something else for the next for the next little while. But here's what I know, and I learned a long time ago. I won't give an account to them. I will give an account to God for my ministry and what I say and what I preach. I will stand before the Lord one day as a preacher and a pastor, and I will give an account for how I preach this word. And I want to preach the whole word of God to people, whether they applaud or whether they walk away. Now, let me say this, too, on a good side. I've also preached... I remember preaching at the old church, and if they gave the invitation, somebody ran down the aisle. They ran down the aisle to get right with God. I remember preaching at the old church and, and giving the invitation, and the church was full at the old church, and they couldn't get to, so they climbed over the pew because they couldn't get out with all the people. So I, 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 I know preaching at times when people get saved and, and people call to ministry are yielding their life fully to the Lord. So I praise the Lord, but I always preach the Word of God. And I just wanted, you want to leave a legacy? serve you'll be remembered speak God's word you'll be remembered number three you want to leave a legacy share God's grace with people share the grace of God give grace let let them see God's grace in your life look at verse 22 and and 23 of chapter 20 in the book of Acts Paul says and now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit to Jerusalem. That's the saying, I'm bound in the Spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. I don't know what's going to happen. Verse 23, save or accept. The Holy Ghost witnesses in every city. Here's what the Holy Ghost is telling me everywhere I go, that bonds, prison, and afflictions, beating, abide me, await me. Except the Holy Spirit saying, told him, the Holy Spirit, and I want to say to you, listen to the Holy Spirit. Every once in a while, stop, listen to the Holy Spirit. Paul said the Holy Spirit witnessed to me, he told me that I'm going to Jerusalem, afflictions, bonds await me. The Holy Spirit told Paul, hard times are coming for you not to prevent him from from going there no no but to prepare him from for going there look what happens in verse in verse 24 here's the beauty of the apostle paul but none of these things move me paul said it doesn't bother me that i'm going to be beaten afflicted put in prison doesn't bother me doesn't move me doesn't stop me why? Because I'm all God's. I'm all God's. And if it can be used for his glory and his kingdom, I'll go through, I'll go to the prison or I'll go to the palace. It doesn't move me. It doesn't matter to me. Verse 24, none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself so that I might finish my course with joy. He said it doesn't matter. My life's not dear to, it's, it's not mine. It's not dear to me. I just want to finish my course, my life with joy. And the ministry which I've received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. My life's not, he said, my life is not what is important. The ministry, the kingdom of God is what's important to do the work of God. My goal is to finish the race. My goal is to tell everybody about the grace and the goodness of God. And that's our task. That's your responsibility. That's my responsibility. That's why we have the friends that we have. That's why we have the neighbors we have. That's why we work where we work. That's why we we go to school where we go to school. That we can share the goodness and the grace and the love of God. That's our responsibility. Whatever vocation, job you have, that's your calling to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Everywhere you go, every day you do that to everyone you come in contact with. You want to leave a legacy? serve just serve out of humility and love wherever's needed people will remember them what you did for Jesus then I would say speak God's Word share God's Word every opportunity reflect the Word of God 
And I would share, say, share God's grace. Just share what he wants to do in your life and what he is doing in your life. Paul says, it's not about me. I don't have to survive. So what do you do with Paul? Paul, you ought to quit preaching the word of God or we're going to kill you. Paul said, well, I'm, I'm sort of between a twixt anyway in Philippians chapter 2 or 1. I'm sort of between a twixt. I sort of want to go to heaven, but for me to be here and be with you is, is helpful and needful. He said, Paul, quit preaching the word of God or we're going to put you in prison. Well, if you do that, could you put me in the Roman prison? Because I've been working on some prisoners and some guards there trying to witness to them. What do you do with somebody like that? They're, they're a non-survivor. They will say, it's not me that's important. And see what happens in our walk with God. We're the ones that become important. And that's where we fail. And that's where we make an error. Where we put us first. We, we try to have a surviving attitude. Listen, that may be good for a TV show, but it's bad for Christianity. We need non-survivors. Non-survivors. Where it's not about us. Where it's all about Him. Where we get to the place where we're surrendered, where it's not about us surviving, or it's not about us looking good. Think about it. Abraham in the Old Testament, he left his homeland not knowing where he was going, but to follow God. Wherever you let, lead me, God, I'll follow. That's a non-survivor attitude. What about the shepherd boy, David? With a sling in his hand, he charges a giant and he yells out, is there not a cause? That's a non-survivor attitude. What about, what about Esther? What about Queen Esther? I can't go to the king if he doesn't hold a scepter out. I would die, the, the punishment for that. But, but I've got to, and so I will. And I'll go on behalf of, of the Jewish nation and plead for them. And she did, and risk her own life. That's a non-survivor. I'll do what needs to be done. What about the woman with the, the, the widow's two mites? She gave her all. She didn't have a savings account. She didn't have a few more coins in her pocket. That's a non-survivor. What do I do after I give everything I have? I don't know. And I don't have to know. Because it's not about me. It's about him. What about the boy who gives his lunch of two fish and five loaves? It's all I have, but here, you take it. What about Mary when she comes before Jesus and she breaks the alabaster box? A year's worth of, it cost a year's worth of, of, of money for that perfume and that ointment. And she breaks it upon Jesus. She gives her all her best. What about Jesus giving his life? That's a non-survivor. And we have too many believers in the kingdom of God that think it's all about them. They want to survive. Jesus said it this way. If you want to save your life, you got to lose it. If you lose your life, you'll save it. It's the great paradox of Scripture. It's this. If you want to go up, you got to get down on your knees. It's the paradox that says, if you want victory in Christ, you've got to surrender your heart and life to Him. To be a non-survivor is to say, Lord, I'm all yours. You want to leave a legacy? You want people to look at your life and know how you lived? You surrender everything to Jesus Christ. And I want to say that, and I'm done, I'm done. Those Christians are far and few between. I don't stand here this morning as your judge. God knows your heart and God knows my heart. But those people who have said, Lord, not my will be done, but your will be done in my life. They're far and few between. Have you prayed that prayer? Have you said, Lord, your will in my life? I don't, know, I don't know what that means. I don't know where it's going to lead me, but I want your will in my life. That's a non-survivor. The survivor says, no, no, my will, my wants, what I want to take place. But the non-survivor says, Jesus, I give my whole life to you. And whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. And then don't take it back up. You lay your life down, say, Jesus, I'm yours. And you live that surrendered life and you follow Christ. That's who he's looking for. You want to leave a legacy that makes an impact upon your family, 
upon your friends then lay your life down to Jesus and say I want your will to be done in my life I'm gonna pray and if you have been living a half-hearted Christian life if your walk with God has been apathetic they'll say nice things Christians will say nice things we'll do the right thing but if you really want to leave a legacy and you really want to make an impact for Jesus Christ why don't you yield your entire life to him the good thank the Lord and the bad and the ugly just give it to Jesus right now I'll pray with you I'll lead you in a prayer and we will surrender our lives to him as Jesus whatever you want from me so let's pray let's pray just bow your heads right where you're in their home there those in the in the, in the, in the sanctuary here just just bow your heads close your eyes and open your heart and open your heart Jesus we bow to you we feel like the Apostle Peter when he when you said after Lord you said in John chapter 6 and you said so many difficult things and you turned to the Apostles and you said will you go away also and Simon Peter looked at you and said Lord to whom shall we go thou hast the words of eternal life Jesus help the church family my brothers and sisters and others watching to realize there's no other place to go you have the words of eternal life and if we're gonna make an impact a difference in the your kingdom it can't be our kingdom so Jesus I pray for my brothers and sisters right now we surrender everything to you we give it to you Jesus our life is yours we're not gonna have that survivor mindset where it's all about me and I've got to look good and I've got to win this battle and I've got to have the last word no Jesus we say your will be done I give you my heart I give you my life I give you my future I give you my talents and I want your will to be done in my life take me take me and mold me and make me in Jesus right now I pray that you chip away some rough edges in some people's lives and forgive some rough edges Lord forgive some jealousy and forgive some hatred and forgive bitterness forgive it Jesus wash it away it can't be part of their life that's a survivor attitude where it's all about me Jesus we surrender we surrender and we give you all of our life and we pray that you would fill us fresh and new with your Holy Spirit and we pray that you would use us in the kingdom and we pray that we would leave a legacy of godliness to our family to our friends that we'd make an impact not because of us but because we follow you Jesus we love you Lord do your work in our heart fill us with your Holy Spirit and we will be faithful to follow you thank you for my brothers and sisters Lord this may be the type of message where they just need to get alone with you and pray and surrender everything Lord to do some wrestling like Jacob of old they need to wrestle and get victory in this area we love you Jesus thank you for the precious Word of God in your holy name we pray amen and amen well God bless you thank you for tuning in and I hope you received a blessing go back and read this Acts chapter 20 and just get the feel read it in the easy reading translation and you'll see the emotion that's wrapped up and the love that Paul had for the elders at Ephesus I love you thank you for tuning in look forward to seeing you soon God bless